The last two problems in your homework deal with exponential decay. Exponential growth looks like this. Boom, and remember that the problem is that the growth is so great, it's really hard to measure, which is why we switch to the logarithm. Well, now we've got a similar problem. We've got exponential decay. So it looks like that. Drops so fast that um, it becomes hard to measure because down here, this is so close to being nothing at all. There's something there, but it's really, really close to the x-axis, which means the amount becomes very small. And so we're going to deal with logarithms on those too, as you will see. Here's the first problem. The data in this table shows that the percentage of adults in a country, in a country, who are currently married is declining. In other words, the number of married adults is going down. Assuming that the percentage of adults who are married will continue to decrease at the exponential decay model, complete parts A through C, below. OK. Well, here we have the percents. These are all percents, right? That's what it says. Percent. Percent. These are the percents of adults who are married. So of all the adults, this many adults were married in 1960. 1980, 19, uh, 2000, and then finally the measurement stopped in 2012. So it says here in A, to use the data for 1960 and 2012 to find the value of K. Well, first we have to look at the general formula for exponential decay, which is a little different in this book. From what you might see in other books. In some ways, it's more clear. In other ways, those of us who were raised in the traditional model have a little bit of difficulty. But those of you who are continuing in the sciences or in math will learn all about this. But right now, the formula we are working with right now is the one given by my math lab for the book that we're using. And that is the general model is A equals A naught e to the negative k t. Now this is the x general, general, exponential decay model. You remember that the general exponential growth model was A equals, or is, A equals A naught E to the positive K T. All right, the, and let's write it down. The general exponential growth model.
the difference you can see is the K. Here it's negative, or there's a negative sign in front of the K. And here there's not. So you can imagine a plus sign being in front of the K. OK, now I look down here and I see that the letter, the letters that they are using for these um, uh, data about marriage are M. Well, that makes sense. There's not a law that says you have to use um, A. This is just the traditional model for all exponential decay. This is the general model for all exponential growth. So we can call it what they call it, and that is M of T, that is the number of the percent of marriages after time equals the original percent of, of, of married people, um, e to the negative k t. We need to know what k is, and so that's why we're using the data from 1960 and 2012. All right, so let's write that down. 1960, we had 68.7% of adults who were married, and in 2012, it had dropped to 40.9%. Um, okay, so this is what we're going to do. This is the first year. This is T naught. OK, which means this is the first year we're looking at this problem. And this is the percent that goes with that first year. So we call that M naught. Or whatever letter they're using with a little circle down in the lower right hand side, lower right hand corner, which means original. And this is for a later date. Your M naught goes there. Your original amount goes there. All right, so M of T equals 68.7 times E to the negative K T. Now, to know more than that, to be able to find the K, we're going to have to use this. So what we're going to say is this, that the percentage of adults who are married dropped to 40.9% in this particular country. Now, T is going to be the number of years between 2012 and 1960. So we have to find that out. All right, 2012 minus 1960 is 52. So we will have 40.9 equals 68.7 e to the negative k times 52. That's where we're starting, and we're going to be solving for K. Which is up there. All right, let's do it. First step, always. Q. All 
I divide by the number in front of E. I do not put it in my calculator yet, so be patient. Okay, I'm gonna move 52 over by the negative sign just because it's customary to put the numbers in, pr in front of the letters. Then, because there's an E, I take the LN of both sides. That's so that I can use the power rule and bring the exponent down. So that the letter I'm going to be solving for, uh, is on ground level. All right, negative 52K times the ln of E, and by now we ought to know what the ln of E is. The ln of E is one. Stop that. Now I've got to unlearn it since I've decided I'm a total failure at making European ones. Okay. So what, what is this gonna do? I divide by negative 52 on both sides of the equation. So K is going to equal, uh, be approximately equal to what I get when I put that in the calculator. Right, okay. So, the LN of 40, Point nine over sixty eight point seven close paren divide by negative fifty two and this is what I get. Let's see if it agrees with what they get. Yeah. Remember, all right, let's see. Use the answer from the pre, oh, blah, 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 blah. Um, yes, let's see, okay. I'm looking for my calculator. What I'm looking for is what to round to. Simplify your answer, round to four decimal places as needed. Okay, so that's how they got that particular answer. Here's one decimal place, two, three, four. This seven is going to cause the nine to go up to a 10. An easier way to think of it when you've got a nine here is you bring in the, the uh, number in front of it. Here we've got 99. This seven is going to cause the 99 to go up to 
100, which is how they get the one there and zero, zero here. So K is going to be 0 0.0100. Zero, zero. The 99 is caused to go up to 100. Or the nine goes up to a 10 and the one is carried over to the nine, which makes it go up to a 10. And then the one ends over there. It's however you want to think of it. It's easier to think of 99 going up to 100. So now we're going to write our specific um, exponential decay formula for this particular question. M of T, that is the percentage of adults who are married, after whatever time we're dealing with, this is B incidentally, is going to be 68.7 times E to the negative, the negative has to be there when, when the number of what you're dealing with is decreasing. Negative K, zero, ah, 0 0.0100 zero, zero, times time. And so this is our formula that we're gonna be using now for part C, whatever part C is. Let's see. There it is. OK, here's part C. Oh, they're, they're sneaky people. I didn't even see this. There are two other parts to be. Aside from coming up with the formula, which may be a second part of A, it's hard to tell. Just ask the questions they give you to answer and you'll do fine. All right, now it says in 2015, what was the percentage of adults who were married? In 2015. Well, we have to figure out what year that is. That's going to be T equals 2015 minus 1960, the original year, T naught. So 2015, that ought to be 55. It is 55. So that'll be 55 years. All we do is we come back now to our specific model, our specific formula. A model and a formula are pretty much the same thing. OK, so for T, we put in 55 because this is after 55 years. And we, um, yeah, we put that in the calculator. So we're going to have 68.7. 2nd LN which gives us e to a power, negative 0 0.0100, parentheses 55, parentheses closed. Or I could have just said times 55, but I didn't. I put it in parentheses. So let's see, this is the answer I get. We'll see in a minute if that's the answer in my math lab and how many places we're supposed to round to and all of that.
Okay. Yes. Simplify your answer round to one decimal place as needed. Okay, here's our one decimal place. This three will not cause the six to go up to a seven. So our answer that we'll put in the answer box will be 39.6%. And there's another one like it in part B, which I have faith you can do this time finding what is the percentage of adults who are married in 2018. So you translate 2018 into whatever year that would be, and it would probably be 58. That is 55 plus three. Okay, now at this decay rate, in which year will the, the percent of adults who are married be 34%? Well, notice that M of T the number you get is automatically a percent. You don't have to translate. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Well, it's not because this is the percent. We didn't translate it into um, decimal form, isn't it? That's interesting. Very interesting. All right, not that interesting, I suppose. Let's go over here. So here's C. Could probably go up. Yeah. Who knows? You never know when you're going to need more room. C. Now, part C says at that rate, that is M of T equals 68.7 times E to the negative 0.7. 0.0100 T. At this rate, in which year will the percent of adults, now in what year, so we're going to be solving for T, in what year will the percent of adults, adults who are married be 34%? So 34% equals 68.7 times e to the negative 0 0.0100 t. We're going to have to solve this and use lns because what we're trying to find is up in the air, in the exponent's position, and what, what um, lns do is they bring down the exponent. So since our variable is in the exponent, this is the only way to be able to solve for t. So the first thing I do is I divide both sides by 68.7, the number in front of e. So we have 34 over 68.7. Over here, 68.7 cancels out. I'll have 34 over 68.7 equals e to the negative 0.0100t. And then I take the ln of both sides. All right, take the L in there. Here we use the power rule to bring the exponent down in front. And of course, the LN of E equals one. 
So now we divide both sides by negative 0 0.0100. 0, 0. Negative 0 0.0100 0, 0. cancels out over here, leaving me with T. And then I put that into my calculator. LN 34 divided by 68.7, close parentheses, and that is divided by negative 0 0.0100. And let's see how many places to round to. It says round to the nearest whole number. So what I get is 70, which is not their answer. What should I do? Well, this doesn't say how many years will it be. This says in what year? And T is the number of years after 1960. So what we're going to do is this. What we're going to do is this. Um, 70 plus 1960 is 2030. And they say 2030. OK. In year 2030. So 70 is right. You just don't want to stop there if it says in what year. How many years? The answer would be 70. In what year? You have to add 70 to year to the first year, T0, which is 1960. And let me put this here for when you're studying later. Cool, just managed to fit. All right, discussion about this. We have our general models. Exponential decay has a minus in front of the K. And uh, exponential growth doesn't, which means there's an understood plus. What we do first is we have to find K. We have to. Otherwise, we can't calculate anything. K, here K is the growth rate. When we're talking about growth. But what we're dealing with today is K as the decay rate. So we have A, and this appears to be part of A, where we calculate our K. 
and then actually put it into the formula. This, usually this is part B, but not this time. It's the last part of A. And then part B has these two questions, one about the year 2015 and then about the year 2018. Okay. And then C says to use this formula to calculate in what year the uh, percent of married adults is going to be 34%. So 34 goes over here, and we solve by first dividing out the number in front of E, and then by taking the ln of both sides, and then by using the power rule to bring down the exponent, and then by solving for T. And then by adding T to 1960. because they say, in what year? Okay. Meditate on this. I keep feeling like something is crawling on me. But it's not. Strange. Okay. We move on. The second problem in your homework is this. Finding the decay rate and the half-life of radioactive elements, substances. If you've got a big hunk of radiation, a big radioactive rock, let's make a picture of uranium, big radioactive rock. Well, the reason it can kill you, and nobody knew this in the beginning, is that this is constantly breaking down very energetically, and so it's emitting particles, different kinds of particles that scientists call alpha, beta, and gamma particles. Alphas are really big, B or Bs or betas are kind of middle-sized, and gammas are really, really so small, they just go through you. But it's the alphas that tear your cells. And then you get abnormal growth rate, which is cancer. Either that, or you get hit by so many alpha particles in the beginning, you just die right away. All right, well, what happens as it's emitting these particles is these particles are part of itself. And so this rock is actually going to get smaller over time. And I think it eventually becomes lead. But it becomes other stuff first as it loses its radioactive uh, self. So that being the case, If radioactive substances are constantly deleting themselves, sending themselves out, um, we need to find the rate of decay, and that's going to be connected intimately with the half-life. So we need to talk about half-life. If we go to the general formula for radioactive decay. Okay, half-life
which usually ends up being called capital T as opposed to little t. All right, if we're finding half-life, then capital T, that's the, the amount of time it takes this beginning amount to decay to half of its original amount. And the radioactivity of radioactive substances is pretty much gauged, gauged measured by half-life. You read any book, you take any science course where they talk about uh, uranium or other radioactive substances, you're always told what the half-life is. All right, well, we are first going to find the decay rate written as a percent. So let's put a big percent here so we don't forget. And when you're looking for the decay rate, you're told what the half-life is. When you're looking for the half-life, you're told what the decay rate is. So we're gonna do a few of these. We're gonna do like the first two of these and the first two of these. And then the last three are all looking for the Ks. And notice, sometimes you have minutes, sometimes you have years, sometimes you have days, sometimes you even have seconds. So T can mean other things. All right, so let's do this. We start off with a equals a not e to the negative k capital T. And then we start filling in the blanks. Notice that we're not told how much you started with. And that's because it's irrelevant. It's not important here. So we could just label it A naught. So you're going to be left with one half of the original amount of A naught. When you've got capital T over here, which is the half life, but, but you're told what the half life is. 1.8 minutes, poof. Okay. That's where we are right now. One half A naught equals A naught times E to the negative K times 1.8. First thing I do is I'm going to divide out the A naught. Now I could easily say 0.5 here, but I want to leave it this way because I want to show you what the question helps will do. All right, you cancel out the A naught. And you're left with one half equals E to the negative sign, 1.8 K. And of course, we're going to take the LN. Does night follow day? All 
OK. Now we're going to do something a little different than we have been doing. Because again, I want to show you what the question helps tell you to do. We're going to use the quotient role here. ln of 1 minus the ln of 2. That's called the quotient rule. So the ln of 1 minus the ln of 2 equals negative 1.8k times the ln of e and the ln of e is 1. So you have negative 1.8k times 1, which is negative 1.8k. But I'm actually going to go to another line and say that because I want to show you something else that is cool. going to take the ln of 1. The ln of 1 is 0. Now I'm going to take the log of 1. The log of 1 is 0. This is going to be 0 minus the ln of 2. So we're going to have negative the ln of 2 equals negative 1.8 times k. Now, negative 1.8, negative 1.8. Negative 1.8 cancels out over here, leaving me with K on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, I have a negative over a negative. So they're going to cancel. And I have the ln of 2 over the half-life. That's a formula for when you're dealing with radioactive substances that are decaying. If you know the half-life, then K is going to equal the ln of 2 over capital T, which is the half-life. That's a quick way to do it. However, you can work it out from scratch for yourself. And then you don't have to memorize it. OK, so let's put that in the calculator and get an answer. Uh, the ln of 2. Now, where have you seen the ln of 2 before? I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. Doubling time. Used in financial problems. How long will it take your investment to double? You've got LN of two in, in that formula as well. Pretty cool. Here you're dealing with one half. You're not doubling, you're halving. And you still end up with an LN of two. It's quite amazing. All right, LN of two divided by 1.8. 
This is what I get. Point blah, blah, blah. Let me copy that. Copy that. The answer is that in the real life grown up science world, and not in our pristine math world, scientists give the decay rate as a percent. So the first thing we have to do is write this as a percent. Um, you turn a decimal into a percent by multiplying it by 100. That is, you move the decimal point one, two places to the right. So this is going to be 38 point five zero eight one seven six seven. However many places we're told to round to, but let me write down what these are, and then I'll look and see where we need to round. Round to four decimal places as needed. Okay, first, when you're changing to a percent, you wait and you get your, your percent first, then you round to one, two, three, four decimal places. And then the fifth decimal place, seven, will cause the one to round up to a two. So we're going to have 38.5082%. Let's see if they agree. Now I just happen to have the answers here. 38.5082%. But we're not going to stop there. No, no, no. We're going to continue on. Uh, to lead. OK, so this, what we did here, this was for polonium, half-life of polonium. I've heard of polonium. It's not plutonium. That's down here. I've heard of polonium. I don't really know anything about it, but I certainly know about lead. And this must be, I don't know, it's lead. What do I know? We have to do the math problem. So here you go, we're gonna do lead. Okay, the half-life is 22.3 years. And we have to find K. Find K. So the first thing we do is A equals A naught uh, uh, E to the negative K T. And then we need to find out how long will it take, um, what is the K, what is the decay rate? So one half of the original amount equals the original amount times e to the negative k times 22.3, the half-life. So the first thing I do, the first thing I always do is I divide by the number in front of e 
And anything with a little zero in the lower right hand corner is really a number. It's just a number you might not know. So I mark it out, I mark it out. And I'll have one half equals E to the negative 22.3 K. Then take the LN of both sides. And then use the quotient rule over here. LN of one minus LN of two equals, and this of course is the power rule, negative 22.3K times the LN of E, which is one. So I'm going to rewrite this as zero minus LN two equals negative 22.3K. And so what we're going to have is, well, we're going to divide by negative 22.3, negative 22.3. And before I do anything else, I'm going to say, well, zero minus the LN of two is negative the LN of two. Uh-uh, yeah, all right, all right. Now, I get rid of those. The negative signs cancel out, and now I'm ready to take the ln of two divided by 22.3 and put that in my calculator. Calculator, there it is. The ln of 2 divided by 22.3, enter. And I get this. And again, again, we're going to turn this into a percent. So the decimal point is moved two places to the right. So we're going to have 3.10828. Remember rounding to four decimal places. One, two, three, four, five. This fifth decimal place will cause the two to round up to a three. So K will be 3.1083%. And I should have, did I put percent before? I did not, oh, I did. Okay, good. Yes, it's the percent. See, they've already written the percent though, so you don't need to. 3.1083. Right there. Good, now let's do these two where we're finding the half-life and we're given the K. Okay, first one. Let's see if this is easier, iodine. 
I have heard of radioactive iodine. People with thyroid conditions have to take it. Sometimes. There, now notice I do have the answer there. Pretend you don't see it. Okay. A equals A naught E to the KT. Now this is my K, but I have to unpercent it and move the decimal point two places to the left. 0 0.1650. That's going to be my K. Okay, so what I want is to find the half-life, that is, find the amount of time that it will take this later, uh, um, well, that will take this original amount to become half of what it originally was. Negative KT. So negative 0 0.1650 T, right there. Okay, I'll divide by A naught. Had to give my cat a little lovey. One half equals E to the negative 0 0.1650 T. And then take the LN of both sides. And then LN of one minus the LN of two equals negative 0 0.1650 T times the LN of E. Hmm. Okay, never mind. So this will be 0 minus the LN of 2 equals negative 0 0.1650 T. LN of E is one, of course. Um, so I, I'm, I just feel better taking another step here. Boom, boom, okay. This is what we've got. We've got negative LN2 over negative 0 0.1650. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel out the negative signs and we're gonna have the LN of two over 0 0.1650. What am I looking for? My calculator. The LN. LN of 2 divided by 0 
six five zero. Enter. And I get this. <laughs> really? I wonder if I can get it back. Yes. I just keep learning more and more all the time. It never stops. Okay, now. Hit enter. Now, before I do anything else to mess everything up, let us take a photo. I live three blocks from, I think it's Loaf and Joe's, the restaurant. And right now I can tell they are blowing their barbecues, wonderful aroma out into the neighborhoods to try to bring all of us in. Like a cartoon where people get hypnotized by the smell. It's working, <laughs> it's working. Okay, so are we rounding to four decimal places? I think we are. Yes. Um, yes, one, two, three, four. So, one, two, three, four, that's an eight. With a nine behind it, the nine will cause the eight to go up to a nine. So the half-life is going to equal 4.2009 days. Oh. <sighs> And there is a formula here. If you notice this, half-life equals the ln of 2 over k. And k, we already found, equals the ln of 2 over the half-life, we'll just say over half-life. So these problems are actually designed to be done with the formulas rather than going through the whole thing. So again, if you're good at memorizing uh, formulas, feel free. If you're not good at it, it's a little late to start trying. <laughs>